love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. There's a conflict in this scripture. And the conflict is revealed in the meanings of the words translated love in this scripture. If we go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 and 19, we see a conflict, a similar conflict. And then if we come to 1 John chapter 2, we see another conflict of the same sort. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Amen. I have not seen... If, if you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, you are going to see a conflict, what I call a conflict. And then when we come to the book of John, 1 John chapter 2, we see a similar conflict. Now, I need to compare this conflict with the conflict in Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. Okay, maybe you turn to Ephesians chapter 1 first. Let's consider the conflict in Ephesians chapter 1. Then we'll, we'll, when we unravel that conflict, we'll be able to understand the kind of conflict that we have in 1 John chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 1, and the book of Ephesians is the book that Paul wrote after that he had gone to the wilderness of Arabia and he had, he had been teaching and preaching in the churches for so many years and asking the churches to pray for him that God would grant him utterance to communicate the things that he has received which are yet spiritual but there are no words to communicate them accurately. It was in the book of Ephesians that he received the wisdom from God to communicate those things that he has seen and received in Arabia. Now, and he begins to reveal to us in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 that there is a need for the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. Now, he's showing us that the mystical thing, the spiritual thing that is in the economy of God, that which God is doing, is, is actually in a realm that is intangible. And God wants us to be able to handle that realm and walk in that realm and function in that realm and interact accurately with that realm. And in order for this to happen, God has given us the senses by which we can perceive that realm accurately. And he has also given us the spirit of truth that is a witness concerning the things that are furnished within that realm. But he says that these things can be going on in your spirit and you have no knowledge of it and your capacity to interact with the realm that God has called you to will be deficient. And so Paul now begins to spell out the priorities. It's as if he's bringing to our notice a scale of spiritual preference at the moment you give your life to Christ. Some basic insights that you need to capture and you need to possess. And he said that one of the things that you need to one of the um, priorities that is a matter of emergency that you must stumble upon is the reality of your, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened because the economy of God in the New Testament is strongly related to your revelation and perception. Hallelujah. Now you are dealing with a realm that is intangible. Oh my God. I, I may not need that. You are dealing with a realm that is intangible, dealing with a realm that is not visible, dealing with a dimension that is not audible. And God has called us to interact with that dimension. The reality of that dimension resides in the heavens. And by the reason of the personality called the spirit of truth that tabernacles our spirit, he brings witness to, to, to us from the realm of our reality. So that our participation in that realm can be effective. And that you don't need to die before you go to heaven. Because you can interact with heaven right now. By the instrumentality of the spirit of truth that the Panacho see. And there are realities in heaven. There are dimensions. There are, there are realms. There are places. There are, there are, there are, if that realm is, is more real than this realm. And the realm is multidimensional. 
And that's the realm in which God orchestrates his administration to fulfill his purpose upon the face of the earth. And that was why Paul needed so much insight for him to communicate the things that he had seen in the wilderness of Arabia. And he was asking that the churches should pray that God grant him utterance. And by utterance, he was, he was referring to a spirit-energized spirit communication that communicates the hearts of God to the heart of man. And he said that primary and fundamental to our being able to interact with that realm of reality that we are called to is revealed in the fact that the eyes of our understanding must be enlightened. I, I, I've said that if God is going to speak to you, uh, there are three, three ways he does so, or there are three effects, or three consequences, or three things that you experience if God speaks to you. First of all, if God will speak to you, he can speak to you by revelation. When we say revelation, according to the Greek language, which means apocalypse, it brings you into the reality of something that had been existing before, but not revealed to you, not disclosed to you. Now, there are several people, or maybe somebody might be standing behind this board here, and I can't see him. So I've, in my own, when they, they called me, they said, yeah, take a pen, take a paper, walk into this hall, and then write the names of the people you see. Maybe there's somebody standing behind that place. I cannot see the person, and because of that, I don't include the person's name in my list of people that are present. But that doesn't mean I'm accurate. It's just because I was not able to perceive it. And it's the will of God several times and certain times that God will have our understanding concealed in some areas. Especially when he, we are walking on a tightrope of God's dealings in order to be brought into alignment with God's program. Many times God will allow our understanding to be unfruitful as to what he's doing. If you read the book of Luke chapter 24 from verse 45, the Bible says that it was after Jesus, everything had been fulfilled, Jesus has paid the price and all of that, and the disciples did, were still in, they didn't understand what was happening, and then Jesus opened the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. It was a disclosure, an unveiling. The things that we're talking about were blind to the understanding. They were just operating like dummies. They did not understand that they were in the highlights and the hallmarks of the fulfillment of the greatest prophecies that God has ever given to man. So, revelation. Now, the second characteristic is either that he speaks to you by revelation, it's either that he speaks to you by illumination. Now, because the eyes of your understanding being enlightened falls into the category of illumination. Are you with me now? Illumination. And that speaks to you by revelation where it's an outright disclosure. That's what happened to John on the Isle of Patmos. The things that he was seeing were already happening in heaven. They have always been happening. Events have been taking place in heaven. But John was given a disclosure into the things already going on in heaven. So he could tell us this happened in heaven. That happened in heaven. And because the reason why that is possible is because God wants us to be able to interact effectively with heaven and operate and handle a realm that is intangible. If he speaks also, there are times he speaks by illumination. What he does is this. Ah, I don't want to go too far because I'm running away from where I started. If you have read your Bible in the book of Job chapter 33, beginning from verse 12, where Elihu was speaking and Elihu said that God was greater than man. God is greater than man. And he stated his reasons for saying so. He said that God can bring a dream to you, to your consciousness, but he withholds the meaning. All right? That giving you the revelation, maybe you even see people that you know in the revelation, you have seen everything so clear, but you don't understand the meaning. And if you try to interpret it with your head, it doesn't just balance out. So illumination comes in when God gives you something. It's, it's known to your subconsciousness, but the meaning of it is concealed. And it can conceal something like that for a thousand years. And in the day that God wants to unravel that which he has concealed all these years, what he just does to you is just, he gives you illumination. And then you say, okay, every time you hear people say that, okay, it's as a result of the breaking light that comes when we are exposed to illumination. So, in, 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 in that scripture, in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, when we talk about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, it has to do with illumination. The things are before your face, but it's difficult for you to decipher 
and to fathom exactly what is happening. You do not know what's happening, but it's before your face. And because of that reality, Elihu said that God is surely greater than man. Have you seen it in scripture? Many times God will prophesy about something coming to 600 years in the future. And he, he, he speaks it out and he makes it plain. And he, what <laughs> human beings might decide that, okay, we are going to stop it from coming to pass. And they can do their best to try to put a stop upon that which God has ordained to come to pass. But in the day that God will bring his word to pass, the way we enter, you will enter through a way that was never known. And that's why you see it once and again in scripture. And it came to pass. Those are scriptures of illumination. It came to pass according to the word of Daniel the prophet. It came to pass according to the word of Jeremiah the prophet. That is illumination. Now we understand that this is what God has been doing behind the scene. It has now come to understand it. Understand. We have been seeing it. We are in the picture. We, did, we could not put the puzzle together. It was so distorted. But now light has come. Illumination has come. So when we talk about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, it has to do with illumination, not with revelation, disclosure. Are you getting the differences? Huh? Okay. And then the last is inspiration. The other speaks by revelation, by what? Illumination. And then by what? Inspiration. Inspiration talks about, you know, that time you are praying and then something just is laid upon your heart. It's not something that was a product of your thought. You were just, maybe you were just walking on the street and then it was just laid upon your hand. Just laid upon your hand like that. Just laid upon your hand. That's inspiration. But when we talk about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, it has to do with illumination. You were in the picture. You had a clue, but you could not put it together. You didn't have the skill. You didn't have the wisdom until God came and he enlightened you. Hallelujah. You know, there was this guy like that. He had been in the choir with his wife all along. And then his wife would be coming to him um, for, for, for counseling. Coming to him for counseling. There are two men now are, are there now. So the guy would now counsel him. Three men have come. One has dropped. One is no longer interested in her prayer. Her prayer is too much and he cannot cope. And then and she, he kept giving to his just counseling innocently, counseling innocently, counseling innocently. And uh, it came to pass that one of the days he was counseling, counseling. Illumination now came. Now in illumination you are in the picture. But you see, but understanding was taken from you. Just like you had a dream. You saw the picture. But the insight into that which God was saying was taken from you. You have been living with it. Your mind knows it. But you see, understanding was not given you. Are you with me now? Just to show us that the things of which we speak are spiritual things and you cannot, by exerting your mind, break into their reality. And so when we say the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, we are talking about illumination. Now, so what are the things that you cannot know except God illuminates you? They are there. And those things are basic to our growth in the kingdom, basic to our operating in the kingdom. Basic. Now, the, 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 the controversy, the crisis that I'm talking about, we'll see it right now. See, the, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling. Now, you see, when we talk about the hope of your calling, we're talking about... Um, God's end point. We are talking about the result of God's eternal purpose. And except the eyes of your, you are illuminated. Alright? You are illuminated. You know that yes, God is up to something. He wants to achieve something. He wants to. Please. Help me. Let me go and help my wife. She wants to learn how to. Hallelujah. She wants to learn how to drive in the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> a 
Amen. Are you, are you with me now? Are you with me? Now the hope of your calling. Yes, you know that God has called you. You know that you are part of something that God is doing. But you see, except the eyes of your understanding becomes enlightened, you not know where God is headed. You not know the end product of our call in God. I'm not talking about your own personal call. I'm talking about our corporate call. That's what that scripture means. That you will know the hope of your calling. It's something that is in God's end product for the entire process of his economy and his administration. Oh my God. You can switch some others on, not this noisy time. Hallelujah. Are you there now? God's end product. And that's why the other time we began to do a teaching on the book of Revelation. Because the ultimate revelation of God is in the book of Revelation. Ultimate revelation. And we see the end, God's end point. We see the eternal purpose, the fulfillment of the eternal purpose. We see that which will satisfy the heart of God. We see that which is upon the heart of God that constitutes the basis of his drive. His, his generational drive. Yes, he's, he's reaching out in every generation. Reaching out in every nation. We now saw in the book of Revelation where God was headed. But you see, except the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. You can't see that. And if you cannot see that, your work here will not be steady. It will not be accurate. If you don't see well where we are going, you have a problem with your today. Like Jesus, the Bible says that he saw the, the, the glory that was set before him. In enduring the cross today, he received strength. Now, if you are not seeing where God is taking you, you have a problem with your today. And this kind of sin is a product of illumination. Alright? That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, not your own calling. So he called you into a place to be part of a purpose which he has crystallized in his heart. He's talking about his eternal purpose. Now we're doing, wanted to do a study the other time about God's eternal purpose. But we need eight hours to lay the foundation. And if we keep doing that, I don't even know how we'll be able to teach those things, but the good Lord will, will help us. Hallelujah. We need some hours. So the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. The riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. Now, he's speaking about inheritance here. You see, his glory has made riches available to us, which we have been called to inherit. His glory, God's glory, has made riches available to us, which he has called us to inherit. Are you here? His glory. His, his excellent greatness has made riches available to us and he has, he has included these riches as part of our inheritance. Now that we are, we, are, we are his sons, we are connected to him vitally in life, there is an inheritance that his glory has made available to us which is his unsearchable riches. And the Bible says that if the eyes of your understanding are not enlightened, you will not be able to see the extent of these riches. And in the book of Colossians, the Bible shows us the scope of these riches. And he makes us realize that Christ in us, Christ is the unsearchable riches of God. That means now that Christ is inside of you, Christ is dwelling inside of you, you are, the riches of God are made available to you. That which God has put in place for your enjoyment in your spiritual journey, he has made some things available. Things that you cannot ex ex exhaustively enjoy. And he says that except the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, you will not be able to see these riches. You will not be able to live within its, its availability. And then thirdly, he now says to us that except the eyes of your understanding is enlightened, you will not know the power that is at work in us. That's the point of crisis. Because in this scripture, when he tried to describe the power that is at work in us, he had a problem. And the problem that he had was evidence in the fact that he used four words in close proximity. Four strange Greek words in close proximity. 
first world. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now in these two verses of the Bible, one and a half verse, he used four Greek words. All of the four words in the Greek language that has to do with power, he used every one of them. In describing the kind of power that is at work within us. Are you with me now? now so, so in verses like this, we call it a point of crisis. Where all the related words used to describe a thing are deployed and employed in order to grant the hearer understanding. Because Kratos was used there. And when we use the word Kratos, it's a comparative word for power. Are you with me? You are not with me, huh? Now, when the Bible speaks about the woman with the issue of blood, that she had spent all her earnings on physicians, and instead of becoming better, she only grew worse. Hallelujah. Every time you see that the power of God is compared with something, the word used there is kratos. See, first of all, they compared her situation, how physicians tried and failed. And then her situation grew worse. That's comparative. And then Jesus came. She did not even consult him. What she did was she just touched the hem of his garment and she felt that the fountain of that blood dried up. Every time you see a comparison, the word used for power there, virtue there, is kratos. Hallelujah. And the reason why God had to compare, the, the, the Greek people had to compare uh, the power of God with every other known form of power in order to show us the superiority of the power of God is because there were several courts those days, several means by which people could get things spiritually those days and, and, and the Greek man, those Greek words used have, have been used deliberately to make us understand that in comparison with what obtains, this one is more. Kratos. Now, if, 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 if the power that people are used to in a particular locality is witchcraft power, all right? If you bring this power to manifest in that place, it will subdue witchcraft and it will make it clear to everybody that cares to observe that this one goes beyond witchcraft. This one goes beyond infirmity. This one goes beyond death. It goes beyond sickness. Yes, Kratos is always used in comparison with a power or a situation. And that is to say that if we gather all forms of power and put it together and maybe get a unit for it, the Bible is saying that this power that I'm speaking about that is working inside of you, if you know how to harness it and generate it and release it you, and you keep releasing it and you don't stop releasing it, you will get to a point where the value that this power will attain will be stronger than any unit of power that you had in view before that time. Kratos was used. In fact, Kratos is the first word that was used. That means taking us to a realm that this power is greater than any other power that is known to man. Then he now used the word dunamis there. Which means that even though it is greater than any power known to man, it is inherent power. God has released that power and then given to you as an investment of himself in you. So you determine whether or not you want to use it. God will not come and activate it for you. Now it's when you want to use your generator that you use it. That you use it. It's not, the generator will not just come on just because there is a need for light. It's when you place a demand on it that it will come on. And if you want to switch the generator, the generator on, you need to apply some mechanical energy to the dynamo to get it to function. When the dynamo begins to oscillate at maximum frequency, you no longer need to run the dynamo anymore. It can sustain itself. That's dunamis. But in order for you to get dunamis to work, you must apply mechanical energy first. That's why when you begin to pray in tongues at first, it's dry. Especially if you have been off the track of prayer for a long time. And you want to widow yourself through tongues. You find as if there's a resistance somewhere. A threshold energy that you need to overcome. And when you begin to 
break forth and break forth and break forth and break forth. You now come to a realm where you don't need that initial energy you were investing anymore. The system has attained the maximum resolution and it can sustain itself. It can take you for two hours. It can take you for four hours in the same momentum and the same tenacity. Do not. Then he used other strange words. All the four words for power were used in close proximity. That's a, a scripture I call the scripture of crisis. Now, so when we talk about love, not the world, there are too many words there. Love. Almost all the words for love were employed in two verses. It's a scripture of crisis. Did you get it? You didn't get it? There are many Greek words for love. Greek words for love. We have filio, we have agape, we have agapao, we have all of these words are words, we have eros, we have all of these words are words for love. And they are used interchangeably in scripture. And so when you read your Bible and you see love there, it doesn't mean the same thing all the time. When you go to the Old Testament and you see praise, it doesn't mean the same thing all the time. There are seven words used for praise in the book of Psalms only. Alright? So when we begin to see these words clustering in the neighborhood of approximate verses, in high frequency, I call that point a crisis point. It's a point that you need to sit down and really understand what is being communicated. And um, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 is one of the scriptures. He said, love not the world or the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And surprisingly, you come to realize that those words translated love, love, love there are not the same thing. But you see, as confusing as and that scripture might be, it brings out a strange dimension that is worthy of our attention, it's worthy of our scrutiny. So what all the scrutiny in this world. Are you still with me now? Why? Because the Bible says that if any man loves the world, then the love of the Father is not in him. I think we need to find out that situation that we excavate every presence of the love of the Father from your heart. Are you, are you following me? If by any means a man's love has been anchored upon the world or the things of the world. There are two alternatives. Either that you are, your love is on the world or your love is on the things of the world. And the Bible says that if you have maintained that kind of civilization as a description of your lifestyle, you have been doing that at the detriment of the love of the Father inside of your heart. There's no love of the Father in you. Now, so the, 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 you see, the job of a pastor is a, is, a, is, a, is a strange job. Because a lot of people are coming to church that don't, they don't like God. <laughs> if, you press too, if you press hard enough, you'll find out that. Oh, my God. They, they don't really, they're not coming. They don't, it's not because they love God. Especially now, that our gospel, you know, the other day I was talking about five things that if we remove from the Bible, the Bible we're, we're, we're in a cult. Five things. We call them the five pillars of, of the apostolic doctrine. Five pillars of the apostolic doctrine. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And I was telling us the other day that the cross is a pivotal point of apostolic teaching. It's the great divide. It's a difference between that which is in the old and the new creation. Everything that is in the new creation has gone to the cross. But it happens to be that you are a tripartite being and God deals with each part of your universe separately. He dealt with your spirit instantly on the, on the cross and your spirit has moved to the other side. But your soul is still on this side. And your soul is passing through the cross gradually. It's bringing your soul into... <coughs> to experience the cross. To experience the cross. And the degree to which your soul has experienced the cross is the degree to which you are sustained a selfless position of service toward God. 
What the fall of man did to your soul is that it transformed your soul and made itself. Transformed your body and made it flesh. Transformed your spirit and made it dead. You get it? And so the cross comes upon your soul and then it it, pro, it, it, it proclaims judgment on the death that is in your spirit. And on the base of that judgment, it created an atmosphere for the spirit of life to quicken that spirit when that death was dead to it. Hallelujah. And then we became born again. Uh, your soul has become self. Your soul that was created to be subjected and submitted to the spirit and not to be self asserting on the account of the fall, the soul becomes the lead organ that leads the entire universe of fallen man. And the only way God deals with your soul is that he takes you through situations and circumstances, allows you to go through situations and circumstances that will shift your thinking and shift your perspective and will shift your perception. Hallelujah. Circumstances. And in those circumstances, actually the verdict of the cross is being meted upon your soul. So that there's a shift in your perspective, a shift in your philosophy. To bring you to a point where you have no confidence in yourself. But you have every confidence in God. It is that reaction that will make you somebody that is utterly dependent on God. When God has allowed situations to shift your doctrine, shift your philosophy. And the things that you had confidence in before, he will show you how weak and beggarly they are. He's doing that because the cross is administering judgment on everything that is in the old creation that you are trying to base your confidence upon. So that your confidence will become, will be established on Christ. And you will now start drawing from the supply of God's economy to become that which God wants you to be. This flesh too, God is dealing with it. And ultimately, at the end of the day, when we leave this world, we will not be spirits, we will be tripartite beings. You still have a body, even though it will be glorified. You still have a soul. Alright? So when you hear people say, man is a spirit, call, call them, tell, tell them man is tripartite, is what? Spirit, soul, and body. You hear them sometimes say, man is essentially a spirit. Call them again, tell them, man is what? Spirit, soul, and body. Because the doctrine that Christ and Master brought that if somebody is caught in fornication, it's not the one sinning because his spirit cannot sin. His spirit is with God. His spirit is born again. His spirit is righteous. So they are trying to dichotomize that entity. Man is what? Shrapata. If we, if we lose it on that note, we lose the subject of the entire economy. You get it? In every realm, you are trapata. Do you get it? But you see, because God tabernacles your spirit, your spirit must have more authority, and that's where the bearing comes from. But you see, God does not leave any part of your universe outside of his dealings. He deals with your body, he deals with your soul, he deals with your spirit, because he knows that you are trapata. He satisfies you wholly, spirit, soul, and body. You get it? Yes, we need to grow big and grow large in our spirit. We need to grow strong in our spirit. The emphasis must be in your spirit so that every other part of your world will align, take dressing, take alignment from your spirit. But you are trapped at And God deals with every entity of your universe separately. You get it? Now, so if we remove the cross from the gospel, the gospel is vain. Because the authority of the Holy Spirit to bring everything under the old creation into death is only the cross that gives the Holy Spirit, that authority to operate that way and bring those your confidences to death is the cross. Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the prince of this world cast out. And if I be lifted up, that cross gives the Holy Spirit authority to begin to operate. So if there's no cross there, there's a problem. And that's how, that's how modern day preaching is. Just come the way you are. If you can come and you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and you just begin to move around, pray in tongues, if God begins to speak to you. Hey, God will deal with you. He will deal with you. So that aspect of the gospel has been skillfully taken out. But it is our duty to restore it. I had to travel 500 years into church history to find out what they taught. 200 years, 400 years, 1,400 years. And they started building doctrine from... Then you will see 
the doctrine we are preaching today, where it came from, which were the, who, who were people that pioneered it, the errors that are in the body of Christ today. <laughs> you see the one that the Catholic Church brought, you see the doctrines they brought, you see the scriptures that they, were, they twisted to try to explain it. I had to travel 100 and 1,400 years, 500 years, 200 years to check what has God been saying through the generations. How has the truth on God been unfolding? And what is the ultimate revelation in the scripture? That ties every speaking of God and brings it in his accurate perspective. Go back into history. To build the body of truth. So that we will we'll know, we'll know where we are supposed to stand. And we'll have authority to represent God. Are you still with me? Let me, let me jump back to my scripture. Amen? Love not the world. Not the things of the world. If any man loves the world, so he now brings the commandment of you not loving the world in the responsibility of seeing that your life does not go the way of the world is the responsibility of every man. You say, if any man, it's not a congregational responsibility. It's not a family responsibility. He now steps it down and makes it what? Personal responsibility. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It means that if the love of the Father is in you, you will not love the world. And that's what made me say the other day that it's the kingdom that is going to displace and replace the world. Don't forget that. It's a kingdom that will what? Displace and replace the world. Now, before I gave my life, not even before I gave my life to Christ, I, 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 was, a, I was a guy man, actually. If you see the boots I used to wear, <laughs> amen, I was a guy man. Sanchez, my boots, the, uh, the last time I checked, those days on campus, my boots were 17,000. I was clean. Hallelujah. I was still preaching. I was still preaching the gospel. I was still preaching, preaching the gospel. But you see, I, if, it had, if, 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 to, if I will have to compromise the way I will look, then forget that gospel. We have to incorporate the looks into it. Do you understand? Incorporate it. God must, must find a way of fitting into this my template. That's what I'm saying. He can change every other thing, but if it will, it will affect, he must find a way of entering the template. He must squeeze himself in. And you know, life continued on that level. But you see, you know, God will not, you know, he's a gentleman, he will not force himself on you and all of that. He just wanted me to be knowing him more. So I was praying and fasting, and then unknown to me, the love of the Father was growing inside. Then it came to a point where the way I looked didn't really matter to me anymore. And God did not say, stop. He didn't give me any express instruction that I should not wear the Sancho's. And one day I just didn't feel like. Because something was going on the inside and that thing that was going on the inside had a way of affecting the way I perceived every other thing. Well, we need to do an anatomy of the words used in, that, in those two verses. Love not the world, not the things of the world. If any man loved... Sorry, let me bring my computer so that we can do Greek lecture for 15 minutes. When we gather all the tools, then we put it together, then the scriptures will open. Can we do that? Okay, just uh, 15 minutes. Um, Bonnie, please help me with the, the whiteboard, okay? Let's do this arithmetic today and get it once and for all. So we are in First John, Abby. First John two fifteen. First 
First John two. First John. Thank you. But it's as if the the this thing will soon die. Don't worry, I'll not be long. I pray it's it holds. That's why you said it was okay the other day. All right, let's do some word studies. Okay. This is the word you find here. The first time you see love, it is the first time you see love there. In the Greek, what you find there is A G A P A O. Agapao. Right? Agapao is the word you will find there. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the second time it appears is still this word Agapao. Appears two times. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, the Agape. Of the Father. The Agape. So we have Agapao two times and Agape one time. The second thing to do now is to find out what's the meaning of Agapao. Agapao. What's the meaning of that word? It is related to another word. Closely related to it, and you cannot describe this word agapao without that first word. And um, that first word is in strong. Okay. Let me. It's related to the word called filio. That's another word for for love. Filio. So let me read out what filio means. To be friend to. Have affection for. Attachment as a matter of sentiment or feeling. To be a friend to have affection for denoting personal attachment as a matter of sentiment or feeling. Do you get it? Now it has to do with attachment. And please don't forget that word attachment. Well, let me let me write this thing down so that you can follow me. You see, to be what? Friend to. Come on. Yes, have affection for. Come on. Denoting personal attachment. Please, as a matter of what? Okay, as a matter of sentiment 
or feeling. Alright? Alright, let's get the second word now. Agape. Then when we get the two meanings, we'll be able to go back to the scripture and slot the meanings into the scriptures and then find out the basis of the crisis and the conflict. Agape. If any man love the world, the agape of the Father is not in him. This one speaks of an unconditional love. It's not dependent on feeling or the presence of any sense of attachment. It's just non-conditional law. It's not dependent on what somebody has done or what he has not done. And only God has this kind of law. And now that we are part of God and we are in God, we can display and manifest this kind of law. Hallelujah. Okay. By the time we go to, for, we start the conference proper tomorrow, we'll come to discover that the Apostle John was the one that had the revelation of the world. Just like Paul had the revelation of faith. Most of the things about faith we see in the New Testament, it was Paul that spoke about it. It was Paul that unveiled it. But you see that John was the one that spoke more about the world. Does it strike you that it was John that spoke about the world? Or have you ever asked yourself why it was John that spoke about the world? It was John that spoke about light. It was John that spoke about love. Light, love. It was John that spoke about truth. Truth, light, love, and the world. It was John that gave us the revelation of these things. Even in fact, that scripture, third John, that we say, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and it be in health, even as I so prospered. That prosperity preachers used to say that God's prime desire is for us to prosper. But you see, that scripture was used within the context of the salutation of that epistle. Because the true message of the book of 3 John is truth. It was John that had the revelation that said Jesus of Jesus as the truth, as the way, as what? The life. It was John that had that revelation. And it's John now that is speaking about the world. Now, why I want you to know that it was John and why it is necessary for you to know is that John was an apostolic prophet. Now, see, the, the, the role of a prophet is different from the other ministers of God. Not as if I'm trying to exalt the role of the prophet anyway, but that was who John was. He was an apostolic prophet while Paul was an apostolic teacher, apostle and teacher. John was an apostle and a prophet. Uh, Peter was an apostle and an evangelist. Now John normally saw into the realm of the spirit. His books are very, very spiritual. Very highly spiritual. And the purpose of all of his writings is to build in the followers of the Lord basic discernment. It's just that we don't have time. I would have shown you how I arrived at this conclusion. He wants every believer not to be a believer that walks this world without basic discernment. He wants us to have discernment. Alright? So John unveils, because by the time we go into the lecture tomorrow, you are going to see so many things that John spoke about. You were reading some of the scriptures yesterday. He said that Jesus is prayer in the book of John chapter 17. Father, I do not pray that you take them out of the world. It was John speaking. John writing. I don't pray that you take them out of the world. And no other person among the apostles captured among the epistles, in the gospels, no other gospel captured those prayer points. It is not that I'm praying that you take them out of the world, but you keep them from the evil one. So John takes us beyond the natural realm into the supernatural. That behind the scene on earth, there is an evil one. And God is saying, Jesus is saying, I don't have a problem having them 
around this place. There's nothing wrong with that. I want them to be here to represent me. But God keep them from the evil one. What exactly is the implication of that prayer point? Is it that now Jesus is now afraid that the power that is in the apostles is not sufficient to be able to deal with the devil, which is wrong? Because the same way Jesus dealt with the devil, we can deal with him today because we have dealt. The same resources that Jesus used to deal with the devil, we have it with us today. So I know that Jesus' problem and the, the reason for Jesus praying that God should keep them from the evil one is not that the believers don't have sufficient power to tackle the problem of the devil. But you see, behind the scene, and you will not see it in the physical, there is this evil one. And the Bible said the whole world lieth in the evil one. So what you can see with your eyes and the things that you can perceive with your senses are actually a matrix. You don't know their reality. Because as you begin to admire it, the wisdom of the devil is to bring you to a point where by admiring it, it can trigger a lust in you concerning it and then you'll be attached to it in such a way that you cannot, your will cannot break yourself loose from it anymore. At that point, the attachment has brought you in connection with the evil one. And un unknown to you, the evil one is using that thing that you are attached to to control and manipulate your life. And you see, it happens to be that God in your spirit is there because he wants to control and manipulate you according to the counsel of his will. This attachment has created occasion and given occasion to darkness to have the same influence such that if it's true you say, if it's true about you that you are hooked up on the world, the result of that is that the love of the Father is not actually operating in you. Because the love of the Father is unconditional. Many times like that you might be even suffering and, you know, going through some hard times, but you still feel a move to pray. And that move to pray is not dependent on anything you can see in your environment. The environment is stiff and terrible, but you are still moved to commune. You are still moved to... That's why the book of Psalms of Solomon was written. To the romantic dimension of our, of our love for God. It has dimensions. And all the planes and dimensions and colors of our romantic love with God, the things we experience as we commune with Him, were painted in that wonderful book Songs of Solomon. And you notice that in Songs of Solomon you find a contrast and a crisis. Because in Songs of Solomon you are going to find a shepherd boy there, shepherd boy. Solomon was calling out to the maidens. <laughs> <That guy. laughs> and Solomon in that capacity was, was actually standing the cap it was a type of Christ. How that Christ reaches out to you every morning. How that he comes to you to attract you and to woo you with a song blowing on your inside. You did not kindle that song. He was the one that kindled it. It's just like somebody comes to you with a flower trying to get your attention, trying to make you know that well, even if I'm, it's as if I'm ashamed in public because I'm holding this flower before you. And, you know, even if it looks that way, I'm not. So he, he makes sure that he leaves an impression about how he feels to you every morning. When you give him half, half a chance, his fires will, will, will keep on burning. And through that fire, you see the attempts that God makes to reach you. Meanwhile, there's a shepherd boy there that is distracting the maiden from Solomon. Solomon is Christ and the shepherd boy is the world. How I wish we'll be able to dramatize, we'll be able to picture, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to study it during this call. And you see the attempts the love of the Father is making. And how that the shepherd boy, you know, he's in the natural. <laughs> he, most times he wins this, this thing, this love game. The shepherd boy wins most times. Hallelujah. Shepherd boy. And that's why Paul wants that we should not have confidence in any other thing save God. Because that thing that is of the that is of the natural, that you have confidence in your intelligence. That your confidence in your intelligence allow you to depend on God when it has to do with that aspect of life. And God wants to be God of all. Allow you to fail, not because you are not to reveal to you that you all by yourself, you are still insufficient. 
And the name of the game is total dependence on because he's the only one that is all. We see a crisis in the book of Songs of Solomon where the shepherd boy comes to woo the damsel. Solomon does not have as much access to the damsel like the shepherd boy. It's as if the shepherd boy knows the father of the damsel. He comes around. Nobody drives him. But if they standing at far, he can't come too close. Too close. So what he does is that he prays that the south wind will blow upon his garden and take the smell of jasmine, take the smell of anise, take the smell of the, the, the spices in his, his orchard to blow the dancer so that she will remember that Solomon. <laughs> Amen. One must give way. And I really wanted to, to go far with God. I actually had that desire to go far with God. I had the desire to walk with God, to prosper, that my walk with Him will prosper. That I'll get to know Him. Get to know Him. I didn't know what was putting that desire inside of me, but now I know better. It was God Himself that was shedding abroad my heart the love of the Father. Hallelujah. It's like a tranquilizer. That was what what made the church grow. The Spirit of God was moving in the hearts of the people and it was, the Spirit of God was pouring out the love for the Father in their hearts. And even though they were faced with death, they still spurred on. They were faced with contradiction. They spurred on. They were faced with, with, with travail. They, were, they, were, they spurred on because the love of God was strong on their inside. And I, when I study church history, I see the power of that love. It has the ability to extinguish every other affection that is contrary to the desires of God. And to put us on a pedestal where cannot people will say, you are mad. But there's something the zeal of the Lord has consumed you. Can we pray today? You see, the quality of the Christian faith, the reason why we don't to get people again standing for Christ, because doctrine has actually been beveled to present to us a pseudo vision, a pseudo perspective, a false perspective of the Christian faith. Hallelujah. And we are trying to go back to the foundation to excavate the, that reality that the saints of old had that made them take nations. They didn't bother about themselves. They were consumed by a zeal. That zeal was traced to the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we say, this word, agapao, has to be, I have I've met a lady before, anytime she goes into a modern market and she comes out, and she doesn't buy a dress, it's as if she's, she would die. As if she would die. It's not as if she has too much money on you, but she's not. So because of that, she now devised a means not to be going to the market. But you know that is not the solution to that thing. There is an infirmity there that needs to be quenched, needs healing. And one of those days, she didn't want to go to the market, but some of her friends took her out, and then at the end of the day, they found themselves in modern market. The sickness came back. If she doesn't live there with a shirt, I know somebody that if she doesn't eat beans in the evening, it's a problem. She can cry out. She, one day she, she was so busy, so, and then she just remembered by 8 o'clock, ah, I'm not eating be beans. Unknown to her, her eating habit has brought her in attachment, into attachment with a controlling spirit. And she was under the influence of a control. That's what Jesus called the evil one. So don't, I don't, no problem. Let them move around. But Lord, keep them from the evil. And the only way that prayer will be answered is that God will increase the intensity of his affection on your inside and make that thing that is, has so much authority over your life to lose its place in your sight. Can we pray for an increased intensity in our passion for God? Increased intensity. God is looking for men. See, let me tell you. God now is looking for men that will stand for him. 
men that will stand for. And I tell you the truth, if we will not know how blessed the life of the Spirit is until we walk with God like that. Several people might claim you are not okay. You are not. Hallelujah. You know, those days they say, love not the world. And then they gave us how not to love not the world. That you should not wear jeans, trousers. Don't look like this. See, don't do that. So we, 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 just, we just follow like that. Hey. <laughs> and we still love the world. <laughs> we follow like that. We love the people that were free, but we were bound. But... Hallelujah. That's not what Jesus meant. That's not what he meant. He meant something different. Because the truth of the matter is that we did all of that and we were not spiritual people. We're very critical and carnal. If we see somebody that is not like us, we say, and we believe that we are the only correct people on earth. Meanwhile, there was bitterness and darkness and anger inside of us brooding every day. And God was not making a headway in our lives. Then I came to realize the true treachery that Jesus prayed about. There was a possibility of us coming in contact with the evil one through by us yielding to our lusts and coming to attachment with several things that will bring us under the control and the dominion of darkness. I've seen people that, you know, now, do you, okay, maybe if you have ever been in a relationship before, that God said break it. You know how it was difficult for you to break it? Because it, it had to do with affection. Affection is something that you cannot see, but it builds so much muscles and momentum. That was what Jesus meant when he said that if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Because when, they, when that affection has built and you disconnect it abruptly, it will look as if you lost your eyes. When you are emotionally attached to something and you have to disconnect from the something because of God, it will look as if it, the pain will remain. And it will heal just like a wound heals. It will heal just like a surgery that is brought to bear upon your body will heal. That's what Jesus meant when he said that. If as much as that eye, because that thing, the affection will make the thing look as important as your eye. Make it look as important. Like the, you know. The first time somebody goes on, on, on the internet and then by mistakenly there's a pop-up, a pornographic pop-up and the person sees it, there's no attachment. See, but oh, this kind of stuff is here. Then he follows the link. That one is no longer the devil tempted him. Ah, okay. Let me let me start it. I'm too fast. Uh, do you realize that that pop up that came, that the devil occasion that it was it will be when you are browsing, you are browsing that it will come. Okay, that pop up that came was what we call temptation. But you realize that temptation cannot prosper except it, it, there is a lust inside of you that is attracted to it. Now, have you traveled in a, in a public vehicle before? Public car. And when you were traveling in a public car, people now stopped. They stopped at a junction. And then everybody was given liberty to eat. Do you realize that people eat different things? You did not know that every one of them had that appetite. But when there was an occasion for people to choose what they wanted to eat, they ate different. They didn't eat the same thing. <laughs> should, I, should I go on? Now, the Bible says that every man is tempted when he is drawn in his own lust and enticed. That word own reveals that the situation is idiosyncratic, is particular to you. I don't know Ben's loss. He has his own loss that is particular to him. So maybe when Ben was browsing and the pop-up came, that loss was not found in him. And so there was no compatibility. It was like, and every day was like rubbish. He just took the kusa and he, he cancelled it. But was for somebody else, there was such a loss inside of him. And when the pornographic pop-up came, it triggered the loss. Should I say that the devil is not the one that, let, that made you do that thing? You, you just came and 
he gave expression to a loss that was already dead on the inside. That's what temptation is. And the, the devil actually doesn't know what loss you have. So he needs to keep trying his products out until maybe one day he will, I think it's a love. So if he keeps trying, trying like trying, and then uh, try this, try that, he walk out, try this, he walk, try. And then one day he you got your loss. He doesn't know. When that thing serviced, it gave ventilation to your loss. You now felt like going further. Your will now has joined the train. So it is with your will now you've been navigating through the path that that your loss has created. And that's when you discover that lost is, is a war of the soul that knows no boundary. It can take you into the bosom of darkness itself. Is he idiosyncratic? You can meet somebody here that, you know, you know you can come and testify about a temptation that you conquered. But the truth is, was, re- was that temptation really in the area of your weakness? It's easy to conquer a temptation that is not in the area of your weakness now. Don't you think so? And your, that weakness is different from my own. So you can come and say you have a problem in this area. Me, I don't have it. So I feel I'm better than you. No, the truth is this. The Bible says when he's drawn, how? In his own and entice. That's what the devil does. He tries to find your lost so that he can entice you. So when we talk about the psychology of temptation, temptation is not established until a lost has been known. And the devil, the evil one that Jesus said that we need to be separated from is that one that is operating in the unseen realm. Trying to still bring people into bondage that are still born again. By exalting their lusts more than their attempts and the advances that Christ is making in their spirit to get their attention. Do you get it? No, maybe when we, we sit back and analyze the book of Songs of Solomon, you will be able to understand it. You see the drama. You see how we have been struggling and how the world has gained mastery of several souls and several lives. And then you begin to wonder why revival has started. People don't love God. People don't love God. Forget about it. I've traveled far and wide. and Among Christians, among preachers, mm, people don't love God. It's not as if God has not been trying to move since. God can even overlook your weakness, can overlook many things to move, to do his way. He can use anybody to do what he wants to do. If he has not had a way to move, people don't love him. And the truth of the matter is that there's no vacuum anywhere in the spirit. If you see darkness advancing, it's because, it's because God has sought for a man and he didn't find. That's why the only thing was just to allow darkness to advance. You see Muslims, their network is stretching out globally, even in our communities. There's a problem of the world of, of a loss and a misplaced affection that the devil is using to stagnate the growth of the church in our time. He's using it. And we are going to build from here. You will see some things. When you sit down, you will wonder. These things are, may be sounding new to us, but they are not new. It's because we have been fed with errors. And so when... <laughs> They are not new. They are just plain scriptures. We have not even entered the complicated aspects. They are not new. The average Christian doesn't love God. He loves something else. Hallelujah. He loves something else. He loves something else. He, want to, he want, still wants to maintain his identity. Meanwhile, when the cherubims met, when, 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 when Isaiah saw the cherubims, the Bible says that with two wings they cover their feet. That means their agenda is shaped. They don't have any agenda. The only reason why they are existing is to do God's service. With two wings they cover their faces. That means their identity were crossed out. It is selfless. It's not on record. It shouldn't be on record which, which cherub did what. And by two, with two wings, they did fly. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. The feet was covered. The face was covered. But flight was still there. Motion was still there. In the direction that is not within the context of my ambition. With a motivation that is not fueled by myself. The love of God has dwindled. That's why darkness is strong. But as we, we study, we will see the level of departure that everyone has embarked upon. There will be a calibration. You, you use the caliper to identify the unit of calibration of your own level. See, God is, is ready. See. Those days, the people that we grew up under made us afraid. They, they made us feel that God was so mysterious that but when I encountered God, it was different. Because the first few times that I began to encounter God, it was not because I could pray very well. So I knew that God wanted to reach me all this while. And he was just waiting for me to tune my heart a little. His channel, his station will open. Hallelujah. Those days I used to preach and lie. But God was still with me. Are you, do you understand me? He saw my, <laughs> you, are, you, are not, you are not here. He saw many errors that those, are, those prophets told me about that he, God, you know, God is <laughs> that might be my life. For God was still there. I said, okay. And as I kept working with him, he kept taking me out of those things. If we give him half a chance. He will come by your bedside and sit down. And he will not, he will disclose his identity. There are some things he can do to you that will place a stamp on your soul for life. I saw him. And I, my weaknesses were still with me. And he came to me. He changed my philosophy. Then I discovered how hard he had been trying to reach. How hard that the wall that I had built up for myself had created a prison that has blotted him out of my wall. And he was trying to look for a crack through which he could break forth and still show himself. But I had galvanized the world. I had an already Concretize lifestyle that did not give him any opportunity to show. So one of those days we went for a prayer meeting and then by the Holy Ghost the prayer meeting was extended beyond the time we, we stipulated. And we prayed from 5 to 9 in the night. And he came back tired and just laid down my touching the bed sent me to a realm. And he had been waiting for me for a long the shepherd boy is closer to the damsel. But the longing upon the heart of the king is very intense. If only we can shift away from the distraction, you will hear the distant melodies that were carefully concocted just for you in mind. And if you go the direction of that music, it will lead you into a realm. And that realm is the realm of your reality. Why we look not upon the things which are seen? For the things which are seen are temporal. And the things which are not seen are eternal. Can we rise up and pray? Just hold somebody's hand and pray for that life. Pray for that life. God wants to move in our generation. He wants to move through you. He wants to move through me. Pray for that life. Pray for that life. Pray for that life. Pray for that life. The will of God will be performed in that life. The will of Jehovah will find expression. Yes, yes, we'll be able to steady our hearts on this path and respond responsively to his call.
Alebos kanda baboria. Jabala kasketomi nanga de babaya. Endama sabregede la bakaske. If we give him half a chance, half a chance, half a chance, half a chance, he will break forth. He will break forth. He will break forth. He will break forth. Now is that time. Today is that day. Kobre meskata balaha semaya. Mondo rokoske brege de la bakaske tabina gazelaya. Embra manakaske tobina za za brege de la bakuda. Za brege de la baska diamanzale. Ebra manskata balata kaske tobina. Liakam bendon sambra katali mosekea. Liam pandengos kata branta baboza balahaya. Embra makade babos kadam braskate babaya. Embra bala kata bala shakata liba ketelia. Ziantam brembon de kabados katemi. Ziantam brendon gabata sakabaya. Yakabala babon seke bakaske mandeli. He calls for you. He calls your name. He speaks your name even now. He's reaching out even now. He's coming in a whisper. His melody may not be too loud. But it's there all the same. Seeking to get your attention. Meloske mbramantale baboria. Moreska pataze balande bregede. Mantalababa sakaya. Bebranta bonza malahaske. God wants to move in our generation. He wants to move in our time. He wants to, 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 to reveal himself. He wants to break out upon the lives of men. Jebriana Bascata Branta Baboza Mande Pabrenda Bascata Branta Baboza Manta Braga Basaleta Abraman Salamaboria Sakuda Basketa Mina Lebrenda Bascata Bala Hasaya Mansale Ebrenda Baboska Tabriana Babara Mansala Ebrenta Basamina Branta Babori Malatalia Ebrenta Basobre Hala Babaskaya Jaboda Mahalata Maska de Baboria Ika Patala Bahata Basakata Abala Basakata Abranta Basakata Babrada Basakata Babra Sakata La Baboria Ebran Zebrekatela Bakata Babra Sata Branta Baboria Babra Sata Dada Babosa Babra Sata Dada Babala Sata Dada Babala Rabasketo Monse Bregade Balosket Bregade La Balatema Babranta Basabaranda Dada Baboria Abranta Basse Bregade La Balaha Rabeska Bendo Sobria Dada Balahaya Asa Sasa 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 Asa Sasa 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 Asa Sasa 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 Asa Sasa 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 Abalata Kabasata Zabena kaskata mina halaya Abranda baboza bregede La baraka skato bala hazaya Imra masanda baboze Imra masanda baboze Imra masekataya Abranta babara hasa bala bala Abrenda bakada basanda baboria Abranta baboskata bala Ebregede na baskade babaya Eskaboza bala baskata bre Rabaskanda dada babo Rabaskata bala baskade babaya Eskobala masala baha Zabalata Branta Baha Zabalata Branta Baha Zabina Kaskemba Dakabado Eskabala Masaleboria In the name of Jesus we pray Our brother raised a scripture yesterday He said Set your affections on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God What's the meaning of that scripture? Set your affections on things above do you realize that you cannot do that setting yourself? Your affections become set perpetually on the things above. Alright? When you have responded to the love the love that God is calling you into you respond to it. The situation will now be that your soul is raptured into the heavens. And what you think about it's, it's, it's a state. 
It's not something you are trying to do. It's something that is so. Just because you respond to that law. The consciousness of God becomes 24 hours in a day. Alright? It's just like that. Because your affections are perpetually set on things above. Your soul has been raptured. Your love has been raptured into the heavens. See, you, nothing again matters. You might ride in a car, but a vanity that is attached to that level of success is, has no link with your soul. You see, the problem with the things of the world is, because Paul will balance it very well, as we, during the teaching. Paul said, them that use the world as not abusing it. So, we, we are going to use the world. We are like um, an ambassador sent to this place. Let's say you are from another country. Won't you drink our water? You will drink our water. You use our GSM form. You have an MTN line. You will use the world. But everything you are doing, you are doing it in view of representing your nation. You need to give your nation a good name. That's why you're not robbed. Because how will it look like when they say that um, somebody who is an ambassador robs in the country that he has been sent to? No. You are aligned with the country you came to represent. Because your heart is there. And the reason why you are even here is because, of, because there is a nation like that. That's why you are here. Your, your soul will be raptured into the heavens. Your perspective will always be consistent. That's the experience. It's a state of reality. For a long time in our office, they didn't allow us to use our stamp. Because they knew that I was a pastor. And if, if I begin to use the stamp, and my stamp is not on the transaction notes that come into the place, into the depot. That note is, that is invalid. Meanwhile, there are a, lot, a lot of money is made from those stamps. I know seasons, November, December, where they make six million. How would it look like if I make six million in two months? My, my, I, I'll buy, my car will be shaped like the moon. You don't understand it. <laughs> and you won't know, I won't tell you that I've embezzled. I just come with a shoe like this and I say, this shoe is 85,000. You will get there. <laughs> After they, they fight the battle, then they wrote the depot here from the zonal office that if you don't allow those people to stamp you on your own, if anything comes out, you will be, pay the price yourself. We will deny you as if we don't know you. So the man now called for a meeting and said, this is the instruction you have been given. And then the people began to mourn. What was the reason behind the mourning? I didn't know they were mourning. One of them, that's my friend, now came to me and said, see, they are mourning. Everybody is mourning now that you have joined now that you will stop them from making their money. Hallelujah. Two months before they allowed us to stamp, I went to God. See, you never know that a lust is inside of you until a situation comes to entice it. You may not know. So two months before that time, I went to God in prayer. I said, Lord, you, see, you know me now. Because the Bible said that he knoweth our frame. Our dimensions are before him. The scope of our reality. The, the, the circle of our existence. The measurements. The inclinations of our heart. He knows me knows my friend. So I had to go before him and say, you know me better than I know myself. Now, I bring this heart before you. If there is any love for money that has not died, work on it. If you don't work on it, and I don't represent you well, it will be my fault. And me and you will know that I ask you for grace that you did not release. God answered that prayer by fire. Mm. So two months later, when they came with this, and you know, when they, 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 you know, they agreed that we will stamp AP, you know, AP, filling station, Texas, first they will come with their envelope first. They will just say, we came to greet. They have, they have been seeing you see they didn't greet you. 
He said, we just came to dust your shoe. One we carry this thing. Say, say, eh, 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 this thing is not here. Eh. I say, wait. Let us pray. Let us pray. <laughs> for one year, for two years, for three years, for four years. Was it? Something was dealt with. Even the people that hate me, when they, when they, they shot one with an arrow, he, it was me he came to for prayer. He said, I don't like you. You are a bad man. You stop our business, but I know that you are a man of God. You, you, say, you are a genuine one. So now I'm dying. <laughs> I'm dying now. Your soul will be raptured into the heavens. And you will be operating from that point. And the evil one, the prince of this world will come, but there is no ground of compatibility. He will come with products to see if he can, if there is any lust that will give him compatibility with you, but he finds nothing. That's how Jesus lived. Can we pray today that God will shower upon our hearts a, a, a level of intensity of affection that will cause our souls to be raptured into the heavens. Can we pray today? Can we pray? An intensity. Several things that people are conscious of is because they don't love God. There's no intensity. I've seen people in hunger. I've seen people in test. People that obviously, when you look at their situation, there's no hope in their future. Still bubbling with God because their souls have been raptured. There's an intensity that makes them blind to everything that can discourage them. There's an intensity that makes them follow and walk with God with all their heart. There's an intensity. There's an intensity. There is an intensity that God will begin with us. He will begin with us. In Jesus' name we'll pray. Now, some news just came to us now. I received a text message when I was at home. That, um, because if you look at the political terrain in our country, the equation speaks plainly that the North has lost out. That all the colors of the rainbow have suggested that the North has lost out. And whenever situations like this happen, whenever things happen like this, what the North does to make a political statement is a religious riot. And we have received text messages. I don't know if you have gotten it. People have been sending messages to us to begin to pray because there is an attempt, there is a rumor that this night there is going to be a slaughter in one of the northern states. We were not told which state particularly, but I think we need to make it a prayer point and um, it is not out of place for us to stand with it, to stand with it, stand with it. Please lift up your voice. Anything that is go going to bring about bloodshed, anything that is going to bring about crisis in this nation, you want to stand against it, you want to cut it off. You want to cut it off. You want to cut it off now. You want to cut it off. In, every part, in any part of the country whatsoever, be it Plateau State, Kaduna State, Zamfara State, Borno State, Kebi State, Every state, Castina State, Lehos Abra Teka Balance Lima, Lebos Kete Mazalobo Korea Mamandante. Hallelujah. Now some other text messages just came in. This is the situation going on now in Plateau State. They say they have arrested the armed suppliers supplying guns in Jos, Bauchi and Sokoto in the hideout 
in their hideout in Jos. Hallelujah. Amen. There has been a, a traffic of, of arms since, since mid this year. Arm traffic. And some of the arms have even got into Benue State here. And I heard that there's a partnership that is going on now to establish Islam in this territory. We want to pray. See, the Bible says he make a divine as mad. Hallelujah. Somebody goes before he's trying to divine, to consult. And instead of getting a feedback, madness strikes him. He make a divine as what? Mad. He disappoints the, the, the devices of the craft. Can we ask for an intervention from the heavens? An intervention from the heavens. An intervention from the heavens. An intervention from the heavens. Right from the heavens. Right from the heavens. Let there be an intervention. An intervention. An intervention. Babra Mansaka Barabas Kata Babora Namasale Badekate Bradela Babasa Kuta Balante Brenda Babahazama Rabada Baskata Baraka Baskata Baraka Baskata Ba Yambre Kata Boska Taya Mansale Babo Yes in Plateau State in Kaduna State in Casina State in Taraba State We pull we pull your walls down in the name of Jesus Zepude Kaskeda Manda Abrasketon bregetela bakadaya Abrasketon barakasketomina Ebraketani wasakela badahaya Ebregetela baskanda baboza balahaya Ibra maskate bobori makata Yebalante koskete Make divine as mad Disappoint the devices of the crafty In the name of Jesus Christ Leko balande baskadia Eskabalanta Rabasketo barakataya Zebalate koskete bregede Every form Form of weapon traffic, every form of weapon traffic that is going on in every state of this federation, let God arise, let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. <laughs> Abranta Bashabarante, Ebrakaske Tomina, Shabela Kadeba, Shabela Kadeba, Abranta Bashkata, Barabaskata, Barabasata, Abrada Bashamina, Abranta Babo Ribalada, Abrada Bashamina, Abranta Bashabalata, Abranta Baboska, Tebregade, Rabakata Bashata Balaha. Yes, Lord, Baketa Tuska Tebregade, every hideout, every stronghold, every fortress where these plans are being perpetuated, where weapons are being kept. Where intentions are being machinated to bring about crisis today, you want to cut them off. 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 In the name of Jesus. Abrascate Babalanta, Abradaba Sabalanta, Abradaba Sakataya, Abranta Babora Mascadeba, Ibregadela Bacadaya, Abrenta Baladabina Casca, Lebregadela Bacadaya, Escabalanta da Baba, Bansata Talabala, Bansata Baladada, Bansata da Bala, Bansata da Bala. We seal the gates. Shapoto kobolo koskata manda Ebrea la bakate baskata Abrea babalata Abranta baskata Abrea baba We speak as men That utter the words From the parliament of heaven And we seal every gate We seal every gate We seal the gates We seal the gates We seal the gates Make the finest man Shekota balata kabaskadia Ebranta basabra da balatalia, Ebranta bakata baladalia da babalata, Ebranta basabra gete la balatalia, Ebranta baskate balatalia, Apa kabalada da da babo, Apa la baskanda da da babo, Ebranta baskata balada ba, Ebranta baburi balata, Ebranta basakata la babala, Ebranta baboskata ya da babala. Bala baskata balata, bala baskata brada balata, abranta basha balata, abranta babore bala, abranta basha balata, abranta baboskata bera baba, shemina kaskato bina, abranta bakada balata dada babo, abranta balata dera babala. Let God arise, 
and let all his enemies be scattered. Beto kabaskata mina, babrete kete kopa bogoto, abraga skadebo, abraga skadebo, abraga baskanda, abraga baskanda, abraga baskanda, abraga baskanda, abraga dabala dadi dabala, agabala dabaskanda dadababo, bala dada dababo, bala dada dababo, bala dada dababo, akabala baskade baburia bala, abrada basa mena abranta babala, abranta basa abrada babala, abranta baburi bala gada, abranta baburi bala dada, abranta baburi bala dada. Abranta basa mena abranta babala, abranta basa abranta bata laba, abranta baburi bala kasketo mina, abrega de labala, abrega de labala, abda bala 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 bala, abrada bala dada dada babala bala dada, abrada basa mena abrada dada babala, abrada bala dada dada baba, abrada basa bala dada, abrada basa dada dada baba, abrada babo, baka kala babala kata ya, eskabala dada dada baburi, ebala taka basa dada, make the vine as mad, ebaka te boko sebaka te, abala. Abaskade baba, abranta baba, skata vya baba la, abraga de la baba, abraga basa mina, 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 abraga da baba da baba da 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 baba, abraga da 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 baba da baba da, abraga basa da 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 baba la, abraga baba da 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 baba. Make the vine as mad. Batata boko sokola. Abra kaskato mina, abra gete la bakata, abra taba sakata, abra taba boskata, abra taba sami, abra taba bo, abra gabaskata da da baba, abra taba boskata, abra taba sakata la babala, abra taba boskata, abra taba barakata.